I'm Jared. And I'm Joe. And we are in Camden Town, London. Where the Black Lips. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're going to play a show at the Electric Ballroom. Uh, and hopefully people come and hopefully people enjoy it. Yeah, in this day and age, things are a gamble. Economic crisis, black man president of the U.S. I'd say things are looking pretty good. Well, our, our new album, 200 Million Thousand, was recorded. We actually have our own studio in Atlanta. It's, a, it's at a former art gallery we moved in. And uh, it's still a work in progress, still building it, but it's our home. Uh, we recorded it last fall. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like basically our first album that we've done like all on our own, uh, make our own schedules, we're our own gods. Yeah, usually all our albums we'd record in like 10, 12 days or less, but this one we had a little bit of time to like kick back and ponder the greater things in life as we record it. It was really hot because we record Atlanta, if y'all, for y'all, those of y'all that don't know, is in the far southeast corner of the United States, so it's subtropical, it's really hot. So, and we got a lot of mosquitoes and a lot of bugs. We were getting eaten up in there. Yeah, they, to, to be able to kick back and enjoy yourself and not have to be pressured into doing something that's great. Well, the heat in the South definitely has something to do with us culturally, because during the summer, or our very long summer that we have, we mostly just sit around on our front porch and drink beer and barbecue and stuff like that. And it kind of has that atmosphere. You sweat a lot, you're kind of relaxed, but it's good for the music. Uh, it's good for your vocals when it's when you're in that intense heat. It just like it's kind of like how the Stones record when they recorded, like Exile on Main Street. You know they were recording Keith Richards' uh, basement and it was super hot and you know that's it's more natural there. You you sweat. There's no sense in recording when it's cold. Cold weather breeds bad music. Yeah, and all the humidity in the air helps all the sound waves vibrate even more, so you get a much fuller, richer sound. Well, we just we just got back from India in uh, early late. January maybe uh, we have a, a Canadian friend of Indian descent that's living over there during research and he had the idea to start bringing bands over like he asked us and he asked Deer Hunter and Jay Riotard and King Con and Barbecue to go but as always we're the kind of the the lab rats so we went over first and uh, didn't see eye to eye with uh, the Indian officials so much yeah one might say we weren't quite as successful diplomatically as the British Empire but you know, we gave it a, the old college try. The worst scenario in India was basically <coughs> we weren't allowed to do anything we wanted, really. They wouldn't let you smoke at shows. They confiscate your cigarettes. They wouldn't let you drink. Uh, they were aghast as to how much beer we actually wanted to drink. And they, when they were going over the budget, they're like, oh, we did not know that you were going to drink so much beer. And it's like, Ugh. Uh, yeah, they didn't know how much the Anglos can drink. Well, at first, th they thought our stage show was boring because we were kind of like just testing the waters out and they were really stale shows. But then finally, we went off on our own, got some whiskey, and put on a proper show that was fun. The kids, act it was our first time connecting with it. We were like four show five shows deep into the tour. And uh, we went crazy, and uh, Ian and Cole ended up kissing each other, and public displays of affection are highly frowned upon there, and homosexuality is highly illegal. <coughs> so the combination of the two... Uh, resulted in our sponsors pulling out of the tour, thereby fucking all funds and getting us kicked off of the rest of the shows. And they called the Tamil State Police to come arrest us for indecency. So we really had to shag ass and get the hell out of there. And uh, about 12 hours later, we were in Berlin. But after they tried to steal our passports and ask us for 10 grand, it was one of the more stressful points of my life. I, I would say, I would equate it, like, being born was very stressful, like, breathing oxygen for the first time and then getting kicked out of India. Pre-show, I just like to drink beers, because, you know, I, I've heard, uh, even ahead of the fear of death, I've heard speaking in front of crowds is, like, the the most common fear, the biggest fear. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm used to it. I think we're all used to it. Just kicking beers and hanging out. Uh, I only get nervous, personally, at really small shows, like at record stores or acoustic things. If it's like a big crowd, it's so impersonal that it doesn't really bug me at all. No. Vocal warm-ups. Oh. I'll leave the rituals for, the, for those who are not ready. Those are like for like baseball players and football players and stuff. I heard they had like weird rituals. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this summer we're booked on Ready and Leeds as far as for like sure. UK festivals. Isle of Wight Festival. Yeah. Uh, Primavera in Spain, uh, North by Northeast in Toronto. What's that one that's like, fuck, fuck, 
Fuddle Punk or something? Puddle Punk? Yeah, yeah, some like, stupid ass name for a German festival. <laughs> Personally, festivals for me, playing them's fine because for us, like, you know, we're set up, we're backstage. Uh, for the fans, like, man, I've been to Glastonbury and some of those, it's like, I can't imagine the. Maybe it's because I'm on tour all year and I don't work a regular job like them, but to pay to, like, sleep in a refugee camp for three days, like, I don't understand the appeal to that. But then again, like I said, like, I go to shows every day. Those people work 